Hello there and welcome to the video. We're going to look at an endgame, uh, a rook endgame, a famous uh, example of four pawns against three on the same wing. So the most famous uh, of these games is Capablanca against the eight, Capablanca with the white pieces, and here with white threatening to start winning the pawn, we're gonna have a trade. So we begin, we begin with the trades. So now we have this situation four against three. So this is what we want to talk about. And what I want to first of all come across with is, let's see the move that Capablanca played. He played rook a6. Uh, probably should have played uh, g4, but it doesn't matter since black can play h5 anyway, I think. But here, black should play h5. And this is common knowledge today with, with most strong players, you have to play h5. And this is the best defensive setup you can accomplish with your pawns to have them like this and the pawn on h5. And the reason is that it makes it so difficult for white to create a pass pawn. You, the only pass pawn you can create is the e pawn, but then you need the f pawn to support. But the f pawn can't support because it's attacked. So you'd need to play h3, then g4. And after the trade, you'd have to play f4, f5, another trade, and then e4. And finally the third trade and you only have one pawn remaining and black should be able to draw it by knowing some some uh, fundamentals uh, in chess rook end games so h5 is the move that yates should have played he played rook b4 game continued h3 and yates got more chances to play h5 but it didn't rook c4 king f3 and couple placa should have played g4 himself Another chance to play h5, he misses it. And now finally Capablanca gets on the right track and plays g4, preventing h5. Okay, the game continues. And again, theoretically it should be a draw still, but uh, in practice it, it's more difficult to defend this way. For a long time people even thought that this was winning based on this game by, by Capablanca. Okay, so... His plan is to play h4 and h5. And we'll see why in a minute. So that's what he does. And notice this, this setup here. He places the rook so it's uh, protecting the pawn. And then the pawn is protecting the rook. And it's pre protected by the pawn. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, this, this formation protects each other. So he's ready now to play h4, h5. So black. Okay, moves the rook, tries, tries to make some checks or, and or harass the white pawns, but white gets h5 in. Um, computer thinks f6 might be a draw here, or, or give good chances to, to draw. That, that's one way where uh, black can improve. We'll show you another one later. h5, rookie to check, the king comes in. And now... Capablanca takes on g6. Now, if you take on g6 with a pawn, now we already have the pass pawn that we wanted. Uh, what's worse for black is that once we push f5, we might end up with two connected pass pawns against only one pawn here on, on, on the h file. So that's not what black wants, so he kind of has to take with the king. So now the pawns continue to advance, e4. We have some jacks. And the rook comes over once again. And we, we repeat this, this little structure where uh, the rook is defended by the pawns and the pawns defend the rook. So a nice little formation, to, you know, to get things going. And I think it was around here that black had to find... He played rook a3, waiting move. But if he had played h5, he had good chances to draw. Now if you take here... Then it's more simple, and we can go here and take it, and it should be a draw. And if we play g5, then the h pawn actually gives black sufficient counterplay. Rook, uh, king g6, not to get hit by e6. So after check, king back, let's say we go after the pawn, and we start to push something. Looks like white has two connected pawns, but this pawn gives enough counterplay, it seems, and 
after something like f5, we can play h2 because after king g2, rook g3 can't be taken because of the pawn, and then we take this and it's a draw. So perhaps h5 would have been a way to draw here. Still difficult to find in practice. If you play h5 immediately in the end game, it's much easier to, to defend it. And around here, it's getting very, very difficult. And Capablanca correctly takes the eighth rank here and pushes the f pawn. And the threat of this, coupled with either attacking the pawn or playing check and takes, is too much. And probably at this point, it's uh, it's winning for white. The king comes in. Uh, rook a6 check. The king comes in. Now Capablanca brings the king. And makes a waiting move with the rook. And finally he plays f6. Everything's ready. King h7. If king g6, then check and rook here. King h7, rook here immediately. And a waiting move, king c6. Suk Swang actually, because now the rook doesn't have a square on the 7th. You have to protect the pawn, so you kind of have to move the king as he did. But then check and rook g7. And then he simply moves back with the king, plays e6, and penetrates with the king. And notice the final touch, g5, and Capablanca uses the umbrella to check out another instructive endgame by Capablanca, which is called Capablanca's Umbrella Academy, where you learn a little bit about you know the importance of using your opponent's pawn as shelter for your king. And that's what Capablanca does here, and Black resigns, winning Winning endgame. The immediate threat is just check, king here, check, king here, check, and then queens. So the reason why I uh, was uh, looking at this endgame was one of my friends was playing a tournament. I'm actually going to switch over to another game and let's go back to. Yeah, let's go back to this position and show you. So, uh, yeah, my friend is playing Serbia, he's an international master, Iceland's latest I am. And he got a similar end game, played rook takes b5, and took on c4, guess what, we're gonna end up with war against three. So first he played this, threatening to capture, uh, uh, sorry, not capture, to, to protect the pawn, so black had to take it. So now we have four against three, just like we had in Capablanca's game. So now I ask you, what should white do here? Very important move. And I was very happy that uh, my friend saw it and played it. And I actually asked him if he knew about Capablanca's endgame, but he wasn't aware of it. But he had been shown the technique by uh, one of our grandmasters in a private lesson. So he knew, knew a thing or two about how to, how to play this. And I'm sure that the grandmaster that gave the lesson was... Well, uh, knew about the Capablanca game. So of course he played g4, a very important move. Stopping h5, because we know that this is the best formation. This is the formation that black should be trying to get. So we have to prevent him from getting it. And the, the resemblance with uh, the Capablanca game is actually quite unreal. King g3, the white pushes the pawns, and f4, just like in the Capablanca game, we get this pawn formation, and then we get ready to uh, push this pawn to h5. Rook checks, just like in the Capablanca game. King comes back, and now we're ready to play h5. Now in the game, black took an h5, but otherwise white just takes on g6, and we get the same formation. King f3. We could have played rook e5 also. Uh, king a, king f3 is more solid, actually. Rook d5. And after some dancing around, white finally settled on bringing the king back and pushing the pawn, e4. e5, just like in the Capablanca game. And it's actually, yeah, quite funny that he uh, he didn't know exactly about it because it's, it's like he's following the game almost, you know, to a T, you know, how he's, how he's moving the pawns. So, okay, rook a6 uh, and king e3. And here I, sh uh, I think white should have played rook d8. Very similar to when Capablanca put his rook on b8, and then you're ready to push the pawn to f6 eventually. And the weakness of the f7 pawn will most, li most likely uh, decide the game. 
we'll either attack it here or give this check just like in the uh, Capablanca game. So this probably would have won with, with correct play after king e3, black can hold if he plays correctly still. Rook d7, trending e6, so black gave some checks. White into post and f5. Again, just like in the Capablanca game. And yeah, here we deviate from the uh, Capablanca game with e6. And white can defend here if he's very precise with rook to e1. If we try to go for the win, play something like rook a4, we can take it, give a check, and then defend like this. And this is just like we had the filter position, and then we went behind with the rook and started giving checks. There's no way forward for white here. With king f6, where we're gonna give a check here. And you know, if, if king back, we keep checking. And if king here, we can play rook g1 and take this pawn if uh, if white wants this one and there's no way for it so instead uh, his in, uh, international master opponent played rook a6 but now the king gets in because f6 and then we will win the e pawn rook d6 we take the pawn and look at this rook f4 and just like in uh, capablanca's game we played g5 to uh, use the pawn as umbrella and black resigned. If it takes, the king is safe. And we can just activate the rook. Set up a mate threat here. Or go to the seventh and then, you know, give a check or here. Push the pawn, etc. So a very nice win. And it reminded me of this, this very nice four against three end game that Capablanca so, so famously played. So as you can see, it, it's, it's good to know some ideas. Good to know what you should be playing for. And it can't be the difference between... A win and a draw and this was very important for my friend who's trying to uh, get a grandmaster norm so yeah kudos to him too for winning the four against three which is notoriously difficult especially if black knows to play h5 but he didn't give his opponent a chance and you shouldn't either and hopefully you learn that at least that you know from this video see you in the next one thank you and bye bye